Hmm, g'day, it's Radzik here, and welcome back to Pathfinder. This is round two, and let's get going. So, a couple of mistakes from the last one. Basically, apparently, and this is something I've never done, even in, because I've got uh, the two other physical sets. I've got the, uh, I've got this set, and I've also got, uh, what's it called? The, the original, the Rune Lord set. And now I've got the new set. And I've never once played this rule, but apparently, if you're when you discard a blessing, if it matches the top blessing, you recharge it instead of discarding it. So it's a lot harder to lose your deck than I thought. So I can't be bothered going through all the blessings I spent. So I'm just going to do that from now on. I haven't actually looked up to check this rule's true, but I want it to be true, so I'm going to go with it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's get into this. Uh, Oh, let's advance the blessing deck. Yablamo. Blessing of Shelen. And yoink. Okay, so we have a zombie. Zombies are immune to mental and poisons, and it only does half the damage that you receive. Apart from that, it's pretty easy to kill. We only need a combat nine. Should be able to do that, no problem. We've got a heavy pick, which gives us a D10 plus two plus a D6. And that should take this dude out. Yablamo. 15, he's dead. Okay. So now we'll do a blessing. And see what's next. Ah, oh, Demonic Horde. Okay. So this is one of the barriers that makes this set hated, apparently. Because it's pretty vicious. Basically, because the whole theme, theme of this is that we're fighting this demon army that's coming out. So uh, we're actually becoming, you know, leaders like generals in armies. Like, for example, the new RPG for computers called Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, which is a sequel to Pathfinder Kingmaker, is going to be, instead of building kingdoms, you're running armies. And this is the cards version, the card games version of getting that across from the RPG. Look at this. Each character randomly chooses a character to summon and encounter this adventure's servitor demon. To defeat this barrier, all the summoned demons must be defeated. So that's pretty harsh. Basically, we have to roll six die. Yablamo. And, whoa, okay. So we have Player one gets a demon, player two gets a demon, player two gets two demons, player two gets three demons, player four gets a demon, and player four gets a demon. So that is the way it goes. So let's uh, flip this guy over. Let's draw uh, another servitor. So see what we're dealing with here. He's immune to electricity, he's immune to poison, and before we act, we do a Wisdom or Perception 7. Now, this guy's got Perception 6.1, which means that if he's super lucky and he rolls a 6, he will pass this test. Come on. Oh, my God. Yes. So, we rolled a 7 because we have the plus 1 because he's got, uh, you know... Perception is six plus one. The point is, if we pass this test, his combat is eight. If we don't pass the test, his combat is plus three, which is 11. So most people are going to be fighting 11 powered monsters. We only have to beat an eight, which means we should definitely, definitely win this. I know, you know, it's uh, taking life into your own hands, mocking Rochelle by saying you're definitely going to roll it, but I think we're going to roll this. So it is a... D10 plus 2 for our strength, plus the pick, which is a D6 being added. We only need 8. Come on. Come on. Oh, God, we get 9. Lucky. Okay, so that is that. So he's done. Now we need 3 fights for level 2. Okay, so this is pretty hard. So we need to fight three demons here. For starters, he has wisdom or perception seven. 
and his wisdom is six, which means that Crow is unable to beat it. So we're always fighting level 11. So the first thing we're going to do is... How many do we have to do here? We've got to do three. Okay, so we'll do whatever. The Earth Breaker. This is a two-handed. It is a melee plus two D6s. So that is one, two. Melee is a D12 plus one. Yablamo. Okay, that's a 20, so that's a pass. Spend Servitor. Yablamo. 14, that's a pass. Spend Servitor. Yablamo. That's a pass. Okay, so he made short work of that, demons. Now we have two at four and then we're done so that's this bloke here so this bloke he is actually a lot better fighter than he looks and i'll show you why basically he's got this amazing creature here which is just the coolest thing so while displayed when you attempt a strength test and do not play a weapon you may put the top card on your deck to add your arcane skill plus the scenario's adventure deck number to that check so that's really really powerful so for starters, let's spawn our first demon. We're going to play the Sage's Journal, which is add 1d4 when fighting a villain. So that's oh, 1d4. We're going to use our Strength, which is a d6. We're going to put this card on the top of our deck, which is, uh, that gives us our Arcane Dice, which is a d10 plus 2. We're then going to, is it Recharge? And then down here we have... You may discard a spell to draw a random monster from the box. So, boom, we discard a spell. And we draw a random monster from the box. Yoink. And that gives us a D4. Oh, and then we... And then... So, this is actually in our hand, right? So, what happens is when you start using this guy you start collecting monsters he's sort of like a big collector and you can cut casting all your monsters i think of him as a summoner oh wait it says summoner on his card so you're actually summoning monsters to fight for you it's pretty awesome so anyway the point is uh we then discard this guy and this thing will say add one d4 to the check for each banished monster that you banish during the fight so we add another d4 so that is our final lot. Uh, D10 plus 2, 1D6, and 2D4s. So hopefully... Oh, wait, I didn't roll for his... Oh, we can't roll for his knowledge, can we? Ooh, dear. See, then sometimes that happens with this mod. I've got to figure out a way to get around that. I've got to put a timeout on it. Basically... I don't know if you noticed it, but that, that see, how, see how it's kind of wobbling? It's because it hasn't actually stopped moving. So if I try and roll again, it won't roll. See, and then it errors. So it's a huge error in the mod. You can get around it by pressing Control C. Uh, control Z to go back and it basically reloads which resets everything okay whatever so it should work now so that's something I need to fix there's like a big major bug uh, whatever the point is did I roll for his uh, he's got a wisdom or perception 7 his wisdom is a d6 yeah he can't roll for it so let's uh, just go through that again he has his strength which is a d6 he has his arcane, which is a d10 plus two. He has uh, a d4 from the monster and a d4 from the sage's journal. And we're looking for 11 or better. Come on. 15, beautiful. Now, here's something really interesting. 
When you defeat a monster and would banish it, you may add it to your hand instead, okay? And then you can use the monster to fetch your cards or whatever. But this thing here, even though it's a, you know, a henchman, it is actually a monster. See that type monster just on the, I can't really point with the mouse, but just where it says check to defeat, just above that, it says type. That's a monster, right? So I can put this in my hand instead of discarding it. Now I can do my second servitor boom so basically it's the same deal we put a card we will let's clear the dice so we can do it from scratch we put a card on top of our deck that allows us to use so we use we're using our strength die we put a card on top of our deck that allows us to use our uh our cane which is d10 plus two we're using the sage's journal which gives us a d4 and then we're discarding a monster, which gives us a D4, but there's an extra bit of text we haven't got to yet. If you are encountering a monster, add another 1D6 for each monster banished that shares the trait other than basic or elite with the monster you're encountering. This is the same monster, right? It's got outsider, demon, and servitor. This one has outsider, demon, and servitor, so they have matching traits. So that is, bam, another d6. So we're rolling an extra d6 this time. Booyah, 17, that is another win. Boom. And that is it. We actually defeated that, uh, that, uh, whatever it's called, barrier. Beautiful. Okay, now, advance the blessing deck for your turn. It's a blessing of Shlax. So what's happening here is Crow is going to fly over to the laboratory. Yoing. With his movement. See, basically, at the beginning, you can move. The reason we're going there is because we've got this awesome goblin skull, which we have to banish when we use it. But the laboratory has this cool ability where if we banish a card, we can bury it instead. So it means we can use the goblin skull twice in this round and the next scenario. So, booyah. Let's uh, do that. Okay, the point is, it's now time for him to go. Yoink. Oh, the cultist. Excellent. So the cultist has appeared. First thing we do is fight the servitor that he has guarding him. And again, we can't, we can't roll. So we're hitting for a D. We have to beat him for a combat 11. He, he just killed like three of these in a row. So I'm pretty confident of this roll. It's a D12 plus one plus a D6. Go. Ooh, come on. Bam. So that is the servitor is dead. And now we have Baphomet, which is actually even a, even a less powerful role. So uh, I'm not even going to bother using the skull here. I'm just going to roll again. Yablamo. Yoink. Okay, that's another massive death. Okay, so we've killed both of these guys. Now... The problem is, what I didn't think about is, how do you close this thing? When closing, it succeeded an Intelligence 7 or a Craft 5 check. Oh, that's why I didn't go to this location. Oh, I'm an idiot. Intelligence 7. So basically, I've got a D4 is all I've got for that. So I need... I've got one... So the best I can roll is two D4s. Has anyone got, I, I got rid of my brilliance, didn't I? Dazzle, Codex. Oh, that's so bad. I really screwed up. Okay, so I can roll two d4s and that is it. So the chances of this is a one in eight. I have no confidence. 
What she got for us? Oh my god! Intelligence 7. Ah! I can't. I, uh. That's, uh. Well, I'll take it. I lucked out there, that's for sure. And that's closed. On closing, draw a random item from the box. Couch or blame. Five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not going to skip into that. Well, that was horrendously lucky. Okay. <laughs> Orange turns. Yoink. Heavy pick. Now, what do we do here again? Someone acquire a ran... Uh, when you acquire a weapon, you may draw a card. So heavy pick is a strength six. We should get this. This is a D8 plus three. Uh, this is just a D8, big pardon. Actually, we can do melee, which is a plus three. So that's four, five, six, seven. So we pass that, or I'll, I'll just roll again. Ah, uh, and advanced blessing deck. Boom, and now we get to draw a card. It's a blessing, let's discard that. Draw again. It's a shield. Constitute Fortitude is eight plus one. That's another seven. We'll discard our recruit. Ah, Casco Demon. He's immune to acid, mental and poison traits. If evaded, we're not going to evade him. Before you act, deal one fire damage. So we'll just do this thing. Wait, this is... That is not two-handed, so we can use this. Recharge this card to reduce combat damage. I don't think that is actually combat damage. So we'd have to just discard that naturally. And now we fight. We need a 12 combat to win. I'm going to go heavy pick. Now, what is the... How do you close this again? When closing, summon and require, acquire a random weapon. Oh, that's all right. So, I'm going to go heavy pick. That gives us a... D8 plus 1, 2, 3, plus a D6. And I'm also going to discard it. And that gives us another D6. Now, and if any D6s are rolled, they actually count as sevens with this guy. So. Oh, I could just use this thing. Banish this card to defeat a Bane you encounter that has the Outsider or Undead trait instantly. I think I'd rather roll. Blamo. Okay, so we get 14, so we do kill this thing. It then says, if defeated, you are may... Oh, I thought we had took damage after the fight as well, but we don't. I think I might be thinking of the evil tree or something. Anyway, whatever. The point is, we do a fight. We, uh, we beat him. So now we can close the location. And to close the location is just summon and acqu acquire a random weapon. So let's just do a discard... Uh, weapon. Range dexterity. Oh, dexterity four. Oh. What do we need? A five. We have no way to help now. So that is basically screwed. That is so annoying. Well, we can't do this. There's no way to increase our thing, so we actually fail at closing the location. That is so bad. Okay, so... Oh, God, that is really upsetting. 
Okay, blue. So blue is here. You have to send him somewhere now. What's his? He's got uh, knowledge. I want to get this thing here. That's intelligence craft. So we want Anora to go there. So banish a weapon to get rid of that one. So we don't want to go there. So we'll have to go here. So we'll go boom, fly over here. And get a card, obviously. Yoink. Full plate, Fortitude 5. Uh, we have a Constitution 6. So we can technically roll for this. Oh. Fail. Oh, 5. We win. What a shocker. I'm rolling like a demon today. Uh, what's the ability here? At the end of your turn, you may search your deck for an ally or cohort. Now that's your hand. That's pretty cool. Oh, you know what I should have done? Pink. I should have done Potion of Striding. At the start of the end of your turn, banish this card to choose a character location. That character may move. No, I don't really need that, do I? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Ban uh, banish that card. I don't like those cards anywhere. We're going to move that over here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, and there's the other ascension. Okay, so I'm gonna actually quickly try doing this. So what I need a, I need a, what did I need? It was the, yeah. Okay, can we recover this? Dexterity range five. We've played for two D4s. We need five or better. Come on! You lucky bitch. You can do it. Four. So close. Still worth a try. Right, anyway, so back to here. He has Wisdom Survival or Charisma Diplomacy. We have Charisma. So that's a D10. We need a seven. Oh, 10, beautiful. We'll discard straight away and explore the location. Fortitude two, so that's a D6. Ooh, that's a pass. I'm going to discard two cards. And, oh, well, I should do it this way, don't I? Boom. And I draw a six. Uh, one, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, this girl, she is going to move to here and try and do this thing. This is Intelligence Arcane Craft. Now, her craft is super high. It's a D12 plus three. So we need seven or better. Which means you only need to roll a four. Which we roll. Wow, that's... Uh, Another bug in the thing. So we roll four, five, six, seven, which actually passes. But I bet you this is also balked. Yep. I've got a... Yeah, this, this roller needs work. It's basically the the weight state it's waiting for I've got to change 
uh, for what it's doing at the moment is that it's waiting for the die to be rested before it's doing more stuff. I've got to change that to a timer. So it just, it'll time out and do the next thing regardless of whether it's fully rested or not. It's not too much of a hard fix, but it's annoying me. Whatever. So I have no way of, oh wait. No, I have no way of, uh, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have no way of doing another turn here. Let's have a look in here. Still got no spells in there. I'm actually going to discard this. I want this, but she doesn't actually have a use for it. Uh, actually, when I trade, can you may give one card from your hand to another player. Oh, we can't trade backwards. Yeah, so I'm going to discard that. I thought I might get, I, I could, it could be all right to give to the healer, but one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And she is at the same location. So. So instead of my first exploration this turn, I'm going to reveal a card with the divine trait, choose a character, shuffle one, D4 plus one. So I'm going to do one D4 plus one to Anora. So that's four cards. One, two, three, four. Yes. I was hoping the blessings would go back in. And then I'm also going to do a cure on myself, which is basically the same deal. That's three, and I only have three cards. And I roll a divine eight to keep my, it's a D12 plus two. I roll a divine eight to keep my cure. Ooh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice. I think that gets reach recharged, right? To recharge instead of discarding. So bam. And then I draw two five. Okay, so that was a pretty awesome turn. We closed one location. We failed to close another location. So this location here, I'm just going to turn the deck upside down so I know. That does not have a henchman in it at all, which really sucks. So it's going to be a while before we can attempt to close that. But because that doesn't have a henchman in it, I can basically work at the other locations. So what's this thing over here? I haven't even gone here yet. When you move, bury a card. Banish a card that has the corrupted trait. Well, that's the end of round two. That was a pretty awesome turn. I'm very, very happy with that turn. Really bummed out I didn't get to close that location though. I was so stupid. If I just left, if I didn't move there with that guy, with Sheila, and because the, the reason I put Anora there was because she has like a craft as a D12 plus one. So it's like no, it's no effort for her to roll a five, a craft five. I just really screwed up. Well, I'll see you guys next time. I just got back from doing the edit and I did notice a little error here. At this location at the Citadel, at the end of your turn, you may search your deck for an ally or cohort and add it to your hand. So I'm just going to come down here. So we've done our turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Just search in here for an ally. You want to add it to our hand. Well. Right. She needs to, he needs to be healed. Uh, while I'm doing this, I'll just draw. So he's got to draw one card. Oh, I spent that ascension. 
one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And that's that. Oh, I'm still fuming about this situation here. See, I move I, I wanted to get this Raven, because this is an excellent card, right? So you can recharge this card to give one weapon, armor, or item to another character. It doesn't even need to be at the same location. You just send out the Raven. And you can recharge this card to allow another character to give one weapon, armor, or item to you. And you're allowed to play this card after a character encounters a card. So if they need something, you can send it to them. Super powerful, awesome card. And I really wanted it. And it required a craft seven to win. So I thought my plan was... This was summon a weapon. She has excellent uh, strength and melee, and I'll, every weapon that is a strength and melee has a strength or melee check to pick up. See both of these. So I figured I'll move her there, and I'll move Elnora here to get that cool raven. But we drew a damn d bow. And we haven't got any any dexterity really at all in our group now. Dexterity four, dexterity six, dexterity six, dexterity four, dexterity six, dexterity four. So I probably shouldn't have swapped out Hask because Hask Hask has. Uh, uh, because Hask has a dexterity 10 and a range dexterity of 10 plus 3. So I kind of screwed myself there. Okay, anyway, so that's that fix. Basically, the fix is that he starts with a lizard in his hand, which is an awesome little uh, monster. Okay, that's that. I will see you guys next time. Ooh, uh, uh, I can't speak. I will see you guys next time. Yes, that's how you do it. The voice, the voice, it all works.